One of the things that's so remarkable about the Old Testament, this is another thing Nietzsche commented on. He was a real admirer of the Old Testament, not so much of the New Testament. He thought it was a sin for Europe to have glued the New Testament onto the Old Testament because he thought the Old Testament was a really accurate representation of the phenomenology of being. It's like, stay awake, speak properly, be honest, or watch the hell out because things will come your way that you just do not want to see at all. And it might not just be you, it might be everyone you know and everything about your culture that is demolished for, for generation after generation. It's like, stay awake and be careful. And I, like, I think that people only don't believe that when they're being hubristic. And I think that most people know that deep in their hearts. You know, when you get high on your horse, that happens fairly often. If you have any sense, you think, geez, I better be careful and tap myself down a fair bit because if I get too puffed up, man, something's gonna come along and take me out at the knees. And everyone knows that pride comes before a fall. It's like, if you have any, that's why it says in the Old Testament that fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. It's like, I've never, in, in all my years as a clinical psychologist, and this is something that really does terrify me, I, has, I have never seen anyone ever get away with anything at all, even once. You know, there's that old idea that God has a book, you know, and keeps track of everything in heaven. It's like, okay, okay, you know, maybe it's not a book. Fine. But that is a really useful thing to think about because, well, and maybe you disagree. Maybe you think people get away with things all the time. I tell you, I've never seen it. What I see instead is that thing happens, right? They, someone twists the fabric of reality. And they do it successfully because it doesn't snap back at them that moment. And then like two years later, something unravels. And they get walloped and they think, oh my God, that's so unfair. And then we track it. It's like, but what happened before that? This. Well, and then what? This. And then what? This. And then what? Oh! Oh, this! Oh, that's where it went wrong. It's, yeah, because you can't twist the fabric of reality without having it snap back. It doesn't work that way, and why would it? Because what are you going to do? Twist the fabric of reality? I don't think so. I think it's bigger than you. You know, and I think that one of the things that really tempts people is the idea that, well, I can get away with it. It's like, yeah, you try. You see how well that works. It's like you, you get away with nothing. And, and that is the beginning of wisdom. And it's something that deeply terrifies me. And, you know, ever, ever since last September, when I came to more, like, broader public attention, one of the things, I've been terrified of making a mistake because I certainly know I'm more than capable of making a mistake. And thank God, so far, either I haven't made one or no one's found out about it. You know, we walk on a very thin and narrow edge. And we're very lucky when things aren't degenerating into chaos around us or rapidly moving to far too much order and it's not an easy thing to stay on that line and you can tell when you stay you're on that line because the things are deeply meaningful and engaging when you're on that line but if you're not existentially terrified about the consequences of wavering off that then you are truly not awake